Hello, on this video I'm going to show you how to fit the continuous sync system to the Epson Starless SX200. So the fit method is exactly the same for the SX210 and the SX215. So we, I've unpacked the continuous sync system from the box and I've switched the printer on. So one of the first things we need to do is to remove this cartridge case cover. So you will need to press the ink cartridge change button up here and it will bring it to this position and then you manually slide it over to the right hand side so you can get in. So there is a clamp just down here so what we need to do is we need to insert the screwdriver that we provided and gently prise to the right hand side to pop the cover off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to so you do need to do this quite slowly uh, and sometimes it does take a bit of force but, but, but don't worry it won't do any harm whatsoever. So we need to pop the cover off, there we are, like that and we've removed the cover uh, and basically put this to one side and uh, you can save that if it never needs to go back on. So we now need to manually slide cartridge block out of the way to the right hand side and then we're going to put the this cartridge block underneath the T-bar here and then pull it through. So what you're looking for is that there's a nice a nice straight line, there's no twists in the cable. So we're going to manually slide it back over to the right hand side and then we're going to install the cartridge block. So when you install the cartridge block you need to be pushing down very very firmly on the front of the cartridge and at the back so this system does contain auto reset chips and when you need to reset the system you just press and hold this button while the cartridge blocks in the printer you don't need to remove it uh, you press and hold that for around five seconds uh, and the cartridges will reset themselves so again when you put it in you should be listening for an audible click if when you switch your printer on the ink cartridges are not recognised, you'll have to remove the cartridge block, pop it back in and make sure you press down very, very firmly. The odds are, I mean, if that happens, one of them's not making contact. So, there you are, you probably heard that audible click. Sometimes you don't hear one on every one, because sometimes when you're pressing, it clicks two in place together. But you do need to press down very firmly at the front and at the back of the cartridge block. There we are, so that's that bit installed. What we need to do next is to remove the tube arm uh, clamp. So basically on here there's a sticky pad. You need to remove the backing tape from this pad uh, and we need to install it. So the clamp, does, this bit's quite important, it needs to be set 9 centimeters from the, this edge here. Uh, so I'm going to try and guess it because I've fit quite a few of these that normally get it right. Uh, if you're unsure, then use a, a ruler or a measuring tape or something else to measure 9 centimetres. So what we're going to do is we've turned it over like that so we've got a nice U-shape. We've got no twists or turns in, in the cable at all. And then we're going to install it about 9 centimetres up from that position there. So press down very firmly on this tube clamp just to get a good adhesion. So what we need to do now is to manually slide the print head all the way over to the left hand side and to the right hand side and just make sure nothing is snagging uh, and there's nothing catching at all. So manually push the cartridge block over to the left hand side like so and then manually slide it back over here to the right hand side. So what you're looking for is there's no snagging, twisting and it will run freely. So these ink lines can be adjusted through the tube clamp. So if it's too tight or too loose you can either pull it this way to take some of the slack away or push it that way to give it some more slack to reach over to the left hand side. So we're just going to do that one again. We're going to manually pull that over there like that and that, that's the normal shape that's quite normal to have that the printer carriage does normally go a little bit further when it's printing and then manually push it all the way back so if when you're doing this if you're getting it the clamp catching on top of this 
when the printer starts to print this mm -hmm. carriage does normally uh, drop down a little bit but if you're a bit concerned about it catching all you have to do is just hold it and bend the clamp up tiny little bit uh, and that will then give it its clearance but as I say when the printer starts to print this whole carriage drops down and improves the clearance from there anyway so we're going to put, move that over to the right hand side so over here we have a, another clamp so this is just for tidying up the cable so I've removed the green backing tape and I'm going to fix this down here on the right hand side of the printer so one of the next things we need to do is the air filter so that part of installation is now complete on top of the continuous ink system for this model there are eight plugs so these large plugs are your refill holes to, so to refill the system you just take the plug out you either use a syringe uh, with your bottle of ink and syringe it in or you basically pour it in so it's very important with these continuous ink systems that the, the, it is sat at the le level with the base of the printer it mustn't be on a shelf above uh, or raised in any way they work on gravity if it's raised in the air it will flood your printer so as long as it's installed base, with the base of the printer it's going to be fine so these four inner plugs are the air balance chambers so we need to remove the four small plugs from the system and install the air filters which will allow the ink to flow so within your accessory pack there are some air filters they have a, a narrow pointed end and a short fat end so they need to be inserted with a narrow pointed end towards the top like that so the continuous ink system is now installed so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sit this at the side of the printer the cable is long enough for it to go around the back if you haven't got the room at the side uh, but that's where it's going to be for this so that's how you install the continuous ink system on the Epson Stylus SX200.